Navy's testing alternative fuel sources or non-petroleum fuel sources as part of the, its overall energy strategy, which is to reduce its consumption of, of petroleum-based fuels. And it's sort of a two-step process is one, reduce how much we use and use alternatives to petroleum whenever possible. So we're working on the second step of the process, sources outside of petroleum that we can use to make our fuels and still operate our aircraft and ships. We're doing this for one reason. There are a lot of side benefits, but the main reason we're moving toward alternative energy in the Navy and Marine Corps is to make us better war fighters, is to reduce our vulnerability on imported fossil fuel, to make sure that we have energy security and energy independence in the United States military, United States Navy, United States Marine Corps. We're testing biofuels as part of our energy security program. We're looking to have our fuel sources that are more secure, homegrown, from sources that are reliable, that we know. It's not as much of saving money. It's making sure that we have the resources of fuel that we need for when we need it. Less reliance on fossil fuels in the future is just going to allow the Navy to uh, turn towards alternative fuel sources, whether it be a biofuel based on camelina or algae, um, and be able to continue to do our job effectively. What we do is we, we look at the laboratory, we look at the, the fuel, we look at its chemistry, we look at its physical properties. It goes through probably 60 or so different laboratory tests to make sure that the fuel has the same behavior as a petroleum-based fuel. Then we take those fuels and go to the next step of the process. We look at the impact on materials, make sure they're compatible with the materials in our aircraft and the engines. We do component tests and engine tests to make sure that you know, the operation, the performance are the same. We're verifying that the fuel works just like any other fuel. It's a drop-in replacement. It's planned to be a drop-in replacement for conventional JP5. We're testing it to make sure that it operates, in fact, exactly like JP5 and it, that its operation in terms of the engine and the airplane fuel system is no different than, uh, than conventional fuels. Then and only then do we go to the aircraft. And the aircraft is sort of the proof or the validation of everything we've done before that. You know, we're pretty comfortable that by the time we get to the aircraft, this fuel is going to perform, you know, the way it's been envisioned, no issues. And the aircraft has proven that, whether it's been the Super Hornet or the Fire Scout, they've all looked exactly the same. Uh, we started the engines, we had no problems. They started just as we would expect with regular JP-5, engaged the rotors and put the engines up and fly at full power, no problems. And uh, I will say that even though we go through the proper risk management to account for, uh, for possible problems, um, the minute I turned on the, the APU, my heart was pounding. I wanted to see it work, and when it did, it was a great feeling. The results have been all phenomenal. I mean, we've tested seven different systems, and each system has shown no impacts of the biofuels. Every engine we've tested, every platform we've tested, has not noticed the difference between regular aviation gasoline and this 50-50 mix of biofuel. We've tested um, two sources of fuel. The first is Camelina, which is a mustard seed plant. Uh, our fuel actually came from a uh, Camelina grown out in the Midwest, in the western part of the country. And we're tested fuel that was produced from algae. Um, two sources that are renewable, that can be grown in this country, and have shown to make a, an acceptable uh, fuel. Everything looks pretty, pretty good so far. I mean, we've had no problems. As you saw, they did ground turns for a good long while, had some uh, airspace deconfliction going on, and uh, took off fine. Everything looked normal. Within two years from start, you know, from two years from when the Navy took its first drop of biofuel, um, we were successfully completed a program that included hundreds if not thousands of laboratory tests, multiple engine tests, seven flight tests. I mean, it was a huge undertaking that was successful because it took all the expertise we've had across naval aviation and brought it to looking at this subject and, and making it possible. And when you look at everything that we've done in two years to get from inception to to, you know, ready to put something into the specification. It, it's been a tremendous uh, performance by a lot of different people. This show by the Blue Angels is the most public demonstration of just how far we've come. Blue Angels are flying on biofuel because it, it's the next step in developing confidence in the product. We've flown it on single flights, single aircraft. Now we're going to have whole 
basic squadron of aircraft flying in close tolerance, tight formations, where confidence and trust and performance is an absolute. We can demonstrate in this type of atmosphere, we've completed the cycle from laboratory through aircraft to formation flying. The fuel is, is what we say it is. Same performance, same benefits, no different than petroleum. Just to put it in perspective, I fly this airplane about 400 times a year, and this is one of the only airplanes that I ever fly, so I'm very in tune uh, with, with, with the airplane itself. And for me to get in there and see almost no difference between the biofuel and our normal, uh, our normal JP uh, variant uh, is, is amazing. Yeah, the, the fuel performed flawlessly, uh, and we're very excited about, uh, about demonstrating that capability. I wouldn't fly with my wingman if I didn't have 100% confidence that it was good. From an aviation perspective, we've always used petroleum-based jet fuel and there has been nothing else. So everything we've done has been written around a single, you know, source of supply, petroleum. So this is, this will be a, a drastic change for naval aviation. And it's a, it's a huge step forward because this sort of sets the stage to allow more sources and more processes to be put in place and to be tested. So it's sort of the um, standard setter for the future. Before you can use alternatives, you have to prove you can use alternatives. And naval aviation, has led the way.